Hi, we are with uh, Tony nominee Rory O'Malley from the Book of Mormon. Hi. Hey, what's up? That's going to be with you your whole life, Tony nominee. I yeah. love it. Yeah. So, Rory's not only like an amazing Broadway actor, he also uh, is a huge supporter uh, in the LGBT community. He's one of the founders of Broadway Impact. I thought you were going to say he's not just on Broadway. He's really gay. For this great organization, Broadway Impact, with uh, two of your friends, right? Yes, with uh, my very good friends, Jenny Canellos and Gavin Creel. Uh, we started... You may have heard of. Yes. Have heard of them. Yes, who's also in Mormon now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. so exciting. I know. It's so crazy. It's, I love that. Yeah, it's nuts. But uh, we started it back in uh, 2008. I just volunteered. Has it been that long? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. we volunteered for Obama in Cleveland. Jenny and I, I was there in my hometown for a couple of months, mm -hmm. and it was this amazing experience where we were like thrown into being in charge of phone banks and knocking on doors and really taking action to make something happen, and it was one of the most empowering experiences of my life. And then, of course, on election night, it was so, so amazing but Prop 8 passed in California. Oh, yeah. So there was, was like a huge win for the country, but then there was this like setback. Right, right. yeah, it was, it was devastating. And, and when we got back to the city, there were so many protests at mm -hmm. City Hall and all around the city because of Prop 8. And it, it really spurred a lot of our community, especially our generation, into action. Yeah. And we would see so many people from the Broadway community at all of these protests. And we mm -hmm. thought, we've got to do something to get this um, enthusiasm and this passion that the Broadway community has for marriage equality uh, honed into something that can be yeah. really positive. And we would go to the different organizations that are already up and say, well, where did the theater people go? And they would be like, just with everybody else. Just in the air. You know, here. just get it, you know, do uh, a couple of letters, call your congressman, that kind of stuff, and which is all true and all great, but we knew that the potential for the Broadway community to do something more was, was so great that we had to figure something out. So that's where Broadway Impact came from. It came about it wasn't because we said, oh, we need to start an organization. <laughs> yeah. It was because of, you know, volunteering for the Obama's first mm -hmm. campaign or from, you know, talking to HRC and Marriage Equality New York and, and Empire State Pride Agenda and having meetings with these people and doing things with them and then saying, you know what, we, we think that we can take this one step further mm -hmm. with the theater community and uh, it's been truly the most remarkable uh, amazing experience of my life. Now you had mentioned earlier that you guys are campaigning in Cleveland in Ohio and you're like from there so yes. Ohio, my dad's from Ohio. It's, right. uh, it's cute Buckeyes. little, yeah go Buckeyes, cute little state, it's, I mean it's whatever, I like it, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, cute, middle America. But uh, what, okay so like we have the great opportunity of like living in New York, where there's a lot of uh, open mindedness and people think like differently. And but then there's like this, there's this whole part of our country, which I think is be I think the rest of our country is beautiful. It's whatever, but mm -hmm. um, but they they might not be like exposed to as much like uh, diversity as we are here in New York. So when you're in Ohio growing up, like what what and you like I, I'm I'm assuming you like knew you were gay when you were like, younger. Yeah. What was that like? What was that like? Uh, you know, I think it was difficult. Uh, you know, I grew up uh, Catholic and went to Catholic schools. And so I, I, the, the great part was that my family is a very loving, wonderful family um, that accepted me for who I was, mm -hmm. you know, immediately. That being said, it wasn't like, oh, this isn't difficult, you know, that there's a lot of fears because um, I think that uh, for my, uh, certainly my mother's generation, mm -hmm. the people who were gay were living really difficult lives, it, especially in Ohio, you know, being in the closet, mm -hmm. um, many going through the AIDS crisis of, in the 80s, that that was a terrifying time for so many people, um, and, you know, it's not like, uh, there, there just isn't a lot of, there's so much fear around it, not because you don't, you know, want, you don't accept your child, mm -hmm. but that you're afraid for your child, and I think that that is so common for a lot of parents, um, 
for their kids when they're coming out. It's kind of, you know, the kids are, are upset if their parents are upset in any way, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily because they don't like gay people or that they don't want to accept them. It's that they're afraid for their kid. Yeah, we talked about that in my, in my last, uh, in, in the episode before this with Mike Kelton, we talked about that. I think it's a lot of, I think it's a lot of, like, fear of the unknown. Like, yeah. fear of, like, you don't, you, they may not have ever met, like, a gay person. Only, their only perception of it is what they see on TV right. or on the news or, like, or like you said, like our parents' generation, uh, their experience of it is like the '80s, which is like a very different time right. uh, for the gay community. Right. And so I think it's a lot. Of, I think it's a lot of. Uh, I think it's a lot of parents' fears of like just wanting to protect their child, but not knowing how to maybe. And so that's like a, like that is like a factor in parents' like initial reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think that, you know, when you have a child, you have so many dreams sure. for that child, and they aren't necessarily like, this is exactly what I want my child to do, but you do hope for them to be able to get married and have their own family and have a job that they love, and, and when you find out that your child is gay, I think that you realize there's a lot standing in the way of those dreams, mm -hmm. and that can be heartbreaking. There's a lot of obstacles. And all of a sudden, your parents are just people who are, like, heartbroken that your child is going to have to go through those mm -hmm. obstacles. And, you know, I remember, well, you know, when I came out to my mother when I was a freshman in, in college, I kind of went away <laughs> to, you know, a godless university after being a Catholic <laughs> school. And, you know, saw that people who had come out and not, you know, burst into flames and go straight to hell. <laughs> that they were living their lives with integrity. Mm -hmm. And that I felt that I could do the same. Sure. And when I came back from my, my freshman year and I, I told my mom that, I said, look, I, I've known this for a long time and it took me years and years to accept this. You get at least a year, at least <laughs> a year of, of really wrapping your head around this. That's very mature thinking. Well, well, I mean, I <laughs> that's very mature thinking. Well, You're like... Listen, mom. Yeah, well, I, I like that. <laughs> I, I, I love my mom, and my mom was, was very good to mm -hmm. me right off the bat. She was very accepting. Are you an only child? Or do you yes. Okay. okay. I'm an only child. And, uh, um, and you know, it's just me and my mother. So we are very close. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that this was going to be something that was going to be difficult for her, not because of what it said about me, but because of what the, what society was mm -hmm. and, and what the challenges were going to be for me, and, you know, I, I said, we, you get some time now, too, you know, sure. I, I couldn't say it out loud for years, and yeah. not yet. so you don't have to be comfortable with it. You don't it have to throw a parade for right now. Exactly, yeah. and you know what, it's, it's been an amazing process, it's brought us closer together, sure. and, you know, I'm in a relationship now for many years, and our families have been on vacation together. Oh, and, really? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that. And, you know, we, we're, we're um, very close, my, my mother and I, and, and all my family members, because of my coming out process. And I, I think that I'm very lucky in what that process was. But that being said, it was still incredibly difficult, mostly because I'm, I'm of my fears. So you, went to, so you went to Catholic school. Is your mom, it's, like, very religious? Yeah, my whole family I, I, is, is religious, goes to church every Sunday. Uh, I was raised very religious. I had a very deep faith uh, growing up. Jesus was my imaginary friend. Hi, Jesus. I said a lot of prayers, huh. like, on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, I still have a, a very deep faith. Uh, it's not Catholic. It's mm -hmm. not a Catholic faith. And that did have a lot to do with, with coming out. I kind of was raised not to be a cafeteria Catholic. <laughs> and so I'm not. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to pick and choose. Uh, I, I believe that I like I am, that a cafeteria Catholic. Like yeah, that. it was, well, you know, that was, you know, kind of people saying, you know, don't pick and choose what you believe is, you know, if, the, if uh, you can go to church every Sunday or not. And I believe that, you know, uh, the church is teaching what it believes. And mm -hmm. I don't believe the same thing. So I wouldn't call myself. Okay. So you've, like, taken your, uh, like, kind of, like, the faith that your mom raised you with and kind of, like, made, like, your... Yeah, I've been on my own so. spiritual journey. Yeah. But obviously that that Catholic upbringing and going to Mass and, and having prayer as a part of my life, it's a foundation that I still mm -hmm. uh, am... I, I still use today, for sure. Because when I was a teenager, it just wasn't really an option. I didn't feel like I really understood who I was. Mm -hmm. And... 
kids today are so much more They're coming mature. out so much younger. Yeah, and, and you know what? That is a wonderful thing for yeah. so many reasons. And it's also, it's a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to be mature enough to know who you are mm -hmm. in an age or, or time of life when so many people around you don't know who they are. Because they will attack you mm -hmm. because you know who you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. So many times when people are being made fun of, it's because it there it's because people who are claiming to know who they are, um, or who who do know who they are, excuse me, are being attacked by people who just don't have any clue who they are and you yeah. know are are bullied. I think people who bully they bully out of like insecurities fear. and fear of like the unknown, fear of, like uh, Absolutely. it's all out of their own insecurities is why yeah. people bully, which is like it's very sad. It is. It is sad. Funny. You know, I mean, a lot of times, I know it's hard, but to those people who are getting bullied, you know, take a moment to uh, feel sorry for those people who are bullying you. I know that that's not the first thing that comes to mind, but they must be living a really difficult life. Mm -hmm. If that's the energy that they have to put out into the universe, if that's all they've got, because it takes a lot of energy to hurt someone. Mm -hmm. to to tear them down and uh, they must really have very little positive things going on in their life or know themselves at all to to be doing that so um, I don't know sometimes that helps me if I'm if I'm going through something with somebody to be like you know what that person must really be in a lot of pain yeah they're trying to give it to I'm me. so this is so hard this might be hard for like a I don't know somebody who's like an High school degree. No, it's not. You, you all will get it. Uh, <laughs> They're better there, than we there, were. There's this, there's this, there's this, uh, I was told uh, once, I was going through it with this person who was kind of mean to me, and they told me to uh, uh, wish that person, or pray if that's like what you do, but like want that person to have like all the happiness that you have and uh, all, and that you want, right. and uh, and that's so hard, and if you like do that, so, like every day just be like, I want such and such a bully to be happy today, that will like help you yeah. Get through it. It's so weird. It's it such will. a weird concept. But uh, I don't know. That helps me when I'm going through it with people that I'm that are like mean or whatever. Yeah. No. It it does. It's sometimes it feels impossible to do that when you're it's so hard. With anger but, it's somebody, so hard. But, but I think that I think that helps and just have compassion. Being for angry and like having that kind of build up inside of you only only hurts you. It doesn't yeah. doesn't get them anyway. But the other thing that I would say to young people is. To be easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I feel a lot of times, now there's this transition that a lot of people feel the urge or the necessity to be out in as big of a way as possible. Like, and, and you know, like I, I've, I've talked to kids who were like, I feel like I should be demanding that my boyfriend comes to my prom, but I'm scared. Uh -huh. I'm scared to do that. That's okay to be scared to do that. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, that's a lot. That's I, a, this is, you know, like, lot. it's okay to take your time. You know, like, this is your journey. And I, mm -hmm. and I think it's a beautiful that, that people are pushing themselves mm -hmm. to be as out as possible. But when you are in your teens... And when you're getting being to know Being a teenager yourself, is hard enough. Like, being a teenager yeah, is very so hard. hard. And you are being courageous enough just to say it out loud to yourself mm -hmm. and you know I mean that is that was so difficult to me so don't be too hard on yourself take your time you have your entire life mm -hmm. to come out to the world and you will con that is a process that doesn't end you keep yeah. doing that on people never basis. know I'm gay I always have to yes. come out to them so it's yeah. always a big shock <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's for, for everyone. There's well, always yeah, that process that every room you go into or, you know, discussing mm -hmm. it or how open you are about it. That is something that you can... You I still get like that when I travel, like, to other places outside of New York. I always, even though, like, I, you know, I'm very, like, out, uh, I still get nervous about how people will, will react. I get, ner I get nervous about it. So that's yeah. kind of like coming out again in a way. Absolutely. Like, I get nervous about, like, are these people going to... How are they... Are they going to accept me? Are they not going to accept right. me? Are they going to... You have to find courage on a near daily basis mm -hmm. to come out in even the smallest of ways. So, you know, take your time. You'll find a way, you'll get more and more courage as you mm -hmm. get older. And I feel, just when I've talked to kids 
which is just so amazing to me that they can even articulate this when they're under the age of 18, <laughs> that, you know, in their letters, or, or it, it's, it's amazing to me. Just be easy on yourself. Perfect. And if you're in New York, go see Book of Mormon with uh, Rory O'Malley. Come on by. Thank you so much for sharing Thanks, your story. Sorry. Bye.